Isa, we studied in and bits and pieces of the definitions, the different types of prayer. But I just thought I will leap into straight uh, into prayer. Some of the wonderful people uh, in the Bible have prayed. What is prayer? Prayer is a communication with God. You talking to God is prayer. You worshipping God is a form of prayer. But today I want to pick up the first um, proper prayer. Official prayer in the Bible. Do you know where it is? Anybody can tell me where exactly is the first official prayer in the Bible. There were tears. There were tears um, poured out. For example, Ismail cried out and God heard him and God opened the water resource for Hagar. Bible says about it. But the first official prayer is seen in Genesis chapter number 24. So you can study this whole chapter when you get back home. But I'll just talk you through the story and then bring some practical lessons that we can take home. Abraham, he came out of a foreign land um, called Ur for us. It's a foreign land, but it's his homeland. And now he's into a, a land called Canaan, the promised land. Now he's almost at the very end of his lifetime. And now his son is grown up. Almost 39, he's getting to be 40. And he has not got married. Parents will be a bit, you know, jittery when uh, their children are crossing some particular age and they are still bachelors or spinsters. Now Abraham's uh, sort of time... Normally, people used to get married. Men used to get married when they were 40. Isaac got married when he was 40. The next generation, Esau, got married when he was 40. So, that was a common time. But their lifetime also was quite high. They never died like 50, 60, 70. They kept on going till 175, 145. You know, so their lifetime is different. And they became parents when they were, <laughs> Abraham became the father when he was what? 100 years old. So, so 75, right? Or 100? Good. Okay, so quite, quite interesting period. I don't think those things are happening at the moment. God's timings are very different. Now, that's just for your thought, for your general knowledge. Now, Abraham was a bit shivering and shaky. He's about to die, but he wanted his son to get married. So he said, one of his servants, chapter number 24 is not talking much about that servant's name. But if at all you have read Bible, chapter number 15 talks about this wonderful man by name Eliezer. Everybody say Eliezer. The meaning of the word Eliezer is God is my help. What is that? God is my help. What a beautiful name. He was from Damascus. So he has not seen Ur or the land of the Chaldeans. He has not seen it where Abraham comes because the distance between Ur and Canaan is almost 600 miles. Any mathematical scholar here, how many kilometers? Because miles is not our number. How many kilometers? Come on, people. Sort of how many? <laughs> Here we go. Somewhere close. 96 or. 600 miles. How many kilometers? Almost 1,000. Very close. Okay. So get back home and do your maths as well. Okay. Now, this Eliezer has not seen that place. Because the transportation mode was not on cars and bikes and vehicles. They were going on camels. So the time that took from one part of the world to the other part would take ages. 
we don't have a knowledge whether Elias has seen the land of Canaan. But one thing is for sure, Abraham, once he reached the promised land, he didn't want to go back. You see that? He didn't want to go back. He has tasted what the blessing of God is in the foreign, he is in the promised land. He came into the foreign land, which is the promised land for him and he doesn't want to go back. Once you receive the promises from God, when you are in the promised land, when you are under the hand of God, I pray that you would not go back. You would not go back. We would not go back and forth from our old ways into our new ways and from our new ways into our old ways. Once you become a child of God, stick your feet there, stand strong because that is the exact place where you and I need to be in. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, one thing for sure, Abraham loved that place because it is the promised land. But one thing he didn't want was his son to get married to any woman in the land of Canaan because they never knew Yahweh. What it is? They never knew Yahweh. So he wanted Eliezer to go back to his father's land and get a girl from that place. Those days, it was not the sort of marriage which is so popular at the moment. Those days, it was arranged marriage. This is one of those beautiful stories of arranged marriages. Eliezer is being asked by Abraham to bring his hand and put it under his thigh. It's a very unusual place to put your hand to, to some other person and, uh, and make a vow. And the vow is... You will not make my son marry somebody from this land. You are going to get a girl for me from my father's land. Bring her here and don't take my son also there. Bring the girl from there and she needs to be here. Now, jitters comes to Elias. It's not a very easy thing. You know, I have made so many marriages. I have conducted so many marriages. Bringing a girl and boy, you know, if things are going well they will say, God gave the best. If things are not going well, they will say, where is Pastor Binu? Marry, you know, bringing people together is not a great uh, job. Uh, you know, but now, God's call was for Eliezer to find a girl for Abraham's son. Eliezer put up this question to Abraham. If the girl doesn't want to come, what will happen? <laughs> I found a girl. And if the girl doesn't want to come this far, because it is 600 miles to come, their girls don't want to leave their dads, moms, you know, their sheep, the cattle, don't want to come. Then Abraham thought for some time and said, Elias, sir, if the girl doesn't want to come, the vow, the promise that you are making, now it's over. You are released. A bit of assurance he got, but he did not Simply sit. When he was traveling from Canaan to land where Abraham's father's family is, he had camels loaded with wonderful goodies, gifts, so that he can give it to the girl's family. Even before he started, he had faith that God will answer his prayer. You got it? You got it? Even before he started his journey, he had a faith that God will answer his prayer. It's not that I'll find a girl, then come back, then if everything is going well, I'll take the gift from here. No, he already took the gifts on the journey without knowing what the end result will be. He knew that God is going to be his helper because his name is God is my help. Somebody shout a hallelujah for Jesus. But that is not all. He had all the things sorted out. Now he's approaching the place. Chapter number 24 of Genesis. If you can open it up to this first prayer recorded in the Bible. Then he prayed verse number 12. 
Then he prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, make me successful today. Come on, everybody say, make me successful today. Come on, everybody, make me successful today. It is not harmful. It is not bad to ask God to make you a success. Some people get a bit uh, afraid to say, God, make me a success. No, 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 no. In the Bible, the first prayer itself is a prayer to make you successful. And the prayer is, God, make me successful today. Come on, everybody say, make me successful today. He would have traveled all the way from the, the Canaan land uh, and he has come to the land of the Chaldeans uh, and now he's saying God today is your day Lord I've traveled some day I've traveled some uh, some uh, some months uh, on this journey now I've reached this location today is your day Lord today is your day Lord perform a miracle and your miracle will make me a successful person uh, today I want to ask you are you worried uh, whether you will be a success or not, uh, you can ask the Lord today. Ask the Lord in a very specific manner. Make me a success today, Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be a success? I want to be a success. I'm not going to compromise success with anything in the world because whatever God gives me, it is success in my life. Uh, hallelujah. Even if it is pain, I will succeed in my pain. Even if it is a sickness, I will succeed in my sickness because that's from my God Almighty. He will never give me anything to put me down. He will never give me anything to crush me. Anything that comes from God is for my success. And I believe completely whatever God does in our life. Now the story goes very clear. Turn to me again with this verse. See, I am standing, verse number 13. See, I am standing beside the spring. And the daughters on the townships are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, huh, here, see this prayer. I'm going to talk to a young woman. Please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, drink and I will water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. There is nothing greater than this a specific prayer. Absolute specific prayer. God, I'm asking the girls are going to come now. I'm taking you to the history part there. A land where water is a scarce. Water is a luxury. Girls from the house are coming sort of in the afternoon, in the evening sort of time to draw water. And they draw water for themselves and go. Now I'm going to ask this girl some water. She must provide water for me and my cattle and my camels as well. You see, a hard job. He's putting it as a specific point to see it is God who is working for his life. Have you made a specific prayer in your life? Or God, this is what God, bless me Lord. In Bible, there are specific prayers. It is okay to have a specific prayer. If at all you have never put a specific prayer, the month of February, the first Sunday, you are going to have a specific prayer right in your mind and saying, God, by the end of February, I am going to see a miracle in Jesus' mighty name. You need to do that. After my preaching, I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that specific prayer. And I'm going to pray along with you. And we are going to rejoice together in the season of blessing that God is going to make you a successful person. He is going to pour water. She is going to pour water. Not only to me, but also to the camel. The Bible says, 
before he finished his prayer come on everybody say before he finished his prayer god knew the prayer eliasar is going to pray before he started his prayer the miracle started from the house the miracle started from the house eliasar could only see today and this moment but the miracle had already started from the house of nahor some minutes back or some couple of minutes back today when you are praying for a miracle your miracle has already been released from heaven in jesus mighty name hallelujah you are going to receive it this month but it is not the result of your prayer but before you praying god has a plan for you and the plan of god is to prosper you and he will build you up in the right time somebody give glory to jesus hallelujah rebecca comes rebecca is been asked by eliaser can i have some water she pour some water to eliazar and the next question can i give some water for your camels my goodness your heart will pump if you are an eliazar wouldn't it god the exact thing that i asked you is the exact thing that is happening how many times you have experienced that favor from god when you have asked something from god and you have seen that miracle at your workplace uh, you have seen it in your family life uh, if you have seen it uh, and you know what i'm talking about uh, what you prayed in the morning what you received uh, from god that morning when you're walking into your workplace uh, something new is happening something great is happening how many times it has happened for me i know it has happened for you as well now elias is experiencing this new freshness of the god of abraham he has never experienced this thing in his life but today he is experiencing it first hand whatever he has prayed is right in front he did not stand quiet the bible says he ran to rebecca what did he do he ran to rebecca the word ran is powerful it's not walking he ran to rebecca and he gave these things of gold to her we can't do that here but those days it was so nice the things that what was on the camel was given to this girl because eliazar knew this is the miracle this is the miracle when a miracle happens right in front of you don't be lethargic run towards and next thing that he did was he started worshiping the lord what did he do he started worshiping the lord some people which is very very sad god does miracle he loves us he does miracle some are just recipients of miracle and sit quiet and enjoy the miracle but today are we running towards and worshiping the lord are we going towards him and thanking god almighty man i'll tell you new zealand cold has made some people spiritually cold let us get people from australia coming from darwin the hot places to build them some heat here so that we would not be affected by the spiritual letharginess let us run towards god and say god thank you for the miracle lord i know i've seen so many stories in in my life i've prayed for some people i've seen people getting blessed i've seen miracles happening it doesn't go credit to me i don't want any credit but at least they need to be in the prayer meetings they need to be in the church services you can do things sitting at home but i'll tell you when you come here you are showing that you are going an extra mile to worship the lord and show that how much it means to come and say thank you jesus for whatever you have done in my life worship must follow a miracle worship should follow a miracle are you able to worship the lord are you able to worship the lord are you able to say god you are worthy to be worship when eliaser was doing all these things Isaac also was in the field. The Bible says when Rebekah accepted the offer of Eliaser, the family accepted, 
they ate they drank they traveled back along with those days it was very really very good okay when the girls are getting married and going to the husband's house they get some servants as well <laughs> nowadays you don't get those luxury you know some servants also were there and now it's a huge band of people going and now the girl rebecca saw a man young man 40 year old man those days muscles were really strong and she asked eliaser who is that young man coming then she the eliaser says he is my master he is my master you know what he was doing bible says he was praying in the field what was he doing the bible says in some translation he was meditating in some translations he was praying when eliaser has gone for a particular thing he was not singing ha ah, tingle tingle little star and sitting home he was also on his knees and praying today when your dad and mom are praying for your success children you also need to sit on your knees and start praying ah, hallelujah when the church is praying for you boy you also need to be on your knees and pray it's not that somebody is praying somebody is going and doing things for me i also need to do that when two hands join together the sound of a miracle is so nice ah. so i pray somebody who is going to receive the miracle and somebody who is going to pray for the miracle i can see them in the church today and i know in the month of february a mighty sound of a miracle is going to pour out in bethel somebody receive it in jesus mighty name it can be for a new job it can be for a marriage it can be for a child it can be for a house i do not know what your expectations in the presence of god is i would pray if it was me i would pray lord i want to do something greater this month at least touching one person with your gospel hallelujah seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all the things shall follow you that would be my specific prayer god at the end of this month at least i would lead one person into the baptism tank i would be able to baptize that person and i will bring glory to your name jesus that would be my specific prayer it's not a secret prayer right now i am praying we are praying you you may have a different prayer i don't know but we are praying together you are praying for my prayer as well i am going to bless your prayers can we stand up to our feet uh, and we bless each other's prayers uh, and receive a miracle right now in the name of jesus uh, oh the sound of a miracle is being heard in the atmosphere come on somebody receive it in jesus name uh, hallelujah hallelujah you are not here as an accident right now uh, elias uh, was standing uh, at the house of nahor it was not an accident uh, it was a plan of god under the ultimate purpose uh, that god had for isaac and rebecca so that the generation of abraham will go into a beautiful lineage uh, today you and i are a part uh, of the great uh, plan of god where jesus christ was born I want everybody every eyes closed and start putting up that important specific prayer request every eyes closed I don't want any eyes open the music will go on just bring yourself into that wonderful time of prayer people who are watching me online if you are able to spend this time in prayer it can be just a liner prayer it can be just one word prayer but god is hearing it ora mushia re ora re ora baba bashu gudur yara la raba o that miracle is going to be your success 
that miracle is going to be a life changing move that God is going to do upon your life in Jesus mighty name I release a blessing a release a blessing some of you are praying for a breakthrough I can see God going in front of you and releasing those things that were tied up which were not coming out he is releasing it and giving it to you in the name of Jesus this week this week somebody somebody is going to be called from his workplace and they have got a job in the name of Jesus come on somebody receive it somebody receive it somebody receive it hallelujah 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 somebody receiving a greater favor from God uh, that what you are doing right now you are getting out of it a new territory of blessing is going to open up for you a new territory of blessing is going to open up for you in Jesus mighty name i release upon you let the glory of god go the one who is the commander of the army go in front of you and break the shackles oh, he will break the chains oh, he will break the fetters oh, he will give you freedom he will release things oh, he will give you a rebecca a promise oh, a miracle god a miracle he is going to come into your house oh, in Jesus mighty name but i pray that you would worship the lord i want to finish off with the last verse of psalm number 23 surely goodness and your mercy will follow me all the days of my life i am not finishing there and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever come on everybody repeat that verse surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and i and i come on and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever give glory to jesus arise oh we worship your name we worship your name we worship your name we glorify your name of oh father thank you for your word thank you for your miracle that has happened right now every second that is going in this month is closer to your child's miracle is closer to your child's miracle and i see it and i praise god well in advance thank you bless you in jesus mighty name i pray amen, amen.